yeah, how much do you love Kincaid this year? Do you think he can be the wide receiver too on that team? Yeah, I think he absolutely can be. And, it, and if it helps you to understand, grab a pen and a piece of paper and write down Dalton Kincaid and write wide receiver after his name and keep doing that as many times as you need, a like hundred times, you need to write it down a hundred times. What is up, guys? Today on the Football Guys Dynasty Football Show, we'll be checking the temperatures on 2023 rookies. We're going to start with the quarterback, go through a rundown of that. Let's go through the top three. Anthony Richardson sitting at that second round ADP, seven for 12, 67 yards, zero touchdowns, interception. He had two rushes for seven yards, but they're not going to em employ that right now. Bryce Young, super flex ADPs around that, you know, third is third is round he had he was four for six 21 yards didn't get out there for more than a couple series so obviously we haven't seen what he could fully do cj stroud though two for four 13 yards an interception two rushes for six yards all right jeff tell me who do you like here who hi, who's the highlighted player for you this week and what what should we kind of look forward to as as the, you know as preseason kind of goes get started Yes, with the announcement that Anthony Richardson is going to be the Colts' number one starting quarterback out of week one, I mean, he's the player to watch. You saw come out playing against Buffalo. He threw the early interception, but we've seen throughout the process, going back to the combine, that no moment has been too big for Anthony Richardson in this entire process. He settled down quickly and looked very comfortable as the game went on and, and coming out at athletically the entire package when Shane Sykin's offense he is going to be the one to watch he is going to be the one to watch this year for fantasy but also long term as well we saw Bryce Young and CJ Stroud have some growing pains and I think that when it's going to come down to both of those guys lacking that true number one wide receiver and lacking that skill talent around them I think will be a major question with them we saw Bryce Young hit a lot and I think that that could be a storyline to watch especially given his size and the concerns around his physicality if he's going get to get hit and then we saw CJ Stroud throw the early interception the Texans kind of pulled that game plan back a little bit after that and was very conservative kind of to try to rebuild that confidence a little bit on I think on Stroud but um, again it goes back to Richardson yeah, I think the way Anthony Richardson responded to being named the starter speaks volumes about what type of player he's going to be as well. You know, he said, he said, I, you know, I'm not the one saying that I deserve this. Like I, you know, people are telling me and I think that's awesome. And all these guys in this room are helping me. He's just a very humble kid. And I'm very excited to get uh, watch him play this year on the Stroud and, and Bryce Young front. I just I would implore people not to panic. This was their first NFL action. The game was moving a little too fast for CJ Stroud. And I think, Jeff, you mentioned the the lack of weapons there. There have been reports that Dalton Schultz is going to be the go-to weapon in that offense. And I think, obviously, Tank Dell is there, and, and there are some guys that can create some separation. But CJ Stroud does have a little bit of growing pains. You know, he's going to see some more pressure. Same thing with Bryce Young saw a lot of pressure last year. I think Bryce's problem is certainly going to be the weapons there. Uh, especially with the report that Terrace Marshall's out and things like that. But overall, yes. I mean, for fantasy, it's always been Anthony Richardson in terms of high upside, especially for 2023. And I think that he's that guy that can have the the big value boost this year, especially since he's in theory going to be on the field for 17 games. I think my biggest thing, if I was going to go through like panic meter, even though Christian told you not to panic, I like to panic though. I'm a, you know, I'm a dad. I get worried sometimes. I think I would be CJ Stroud is where, just because not so much him, but that offense, Bobby Slowick has never called plays before. So we're seeing this new kind of, Hey, this offensive system that they're installing on that side of the ball. We know that San Francisco offense that they maybe are bringing over, obviously a little bit of the West coast stuff in there. It's going to take time. Um, and I think that's just something to look at. I think, and I don't think they have the weapons. I, I don't think that they're going to have moving forward, the weapons for him this year. So I think that it's something to know because I do. And I think that offensive line does not look good either. So like, I think those are the things to me, Bryce has, you know a little bit of built in because of his play caller and because of his head coach whereas cj this is all new i think they're gonna he's gonna take some lumps this year i think he'll have big games um and i'm not worried about him per se as a prospect but i think he's got a lot of things stacked up against him so if i was looking at those three guys i'd be just a little bit more nervous about stroud richardson yeah but he's gonna run and just he's just gonna be a he's just gonna be that guy he's gonna be konami and you're gonna be fine there i think cj needs that little bit of that offensive system and that flow um now after that we have will levis he is rumored to be behind Malik Willis it seems like he's you know Trinity's QB3 which is not a good sign in terms of the offense I was listening to the Ringer podcast they said the same thing Hendon Hooker it looks like he's probably going to redshirt they signed um, Teddy Bridgewater 
It looks like he's going to be that gap guy wearing number 50. I don't know where he got that idea, but hey, it is what it is. And then we got the wild cards. Stetson Bennett, Aiden O'Connell, Clayton Toon, Sean Clifford, Dorian Thompson Robinson, Malik Cunningham. Jeff, anybody of that group stand out or Levis thing or where do you want to go? Um, good mention on the Levis. I think that that's important. I think most dynasty managers have caught that news, but if you haven't, if you have Will Levis on your team, uh, it might be a good chance to get out of it. Maybe. I don't know if you've got a li- even a window on that. You're probably too late, but, um, I, I do think looking at the other quarterbacks that you mentioned one real quick, uh, Malik Cunningham coming in as wide receiver and then playing quarterback. I do think that the Patriots might be looking for some dynamic elements within that offense. And he could bring that potentially working in a package, maybe with, with Mac Jones as the primary quarterback and kind of moving him through getting creative there. Um, But Aiden O'Connell, I think is the one that kind of stands out to me. I think that he's kind of follows that, that line and especially the McDaniels or the Belichick type quarterbacks that we've kind of seen where they have a lot of college reps and the moment's not too big for them. And the questions around Jimmy Garoppolo's health, and it does look like he is healthy and he is apparently playing much better in camp lately than where he started. Uh, But long-term, I mean, the Raiders are wide open on what they're going to do at the position. So O'Connell has a chance there that with an open-minded organization, potentially at that quarterback position to work his way up and, and kind of is the name to watch i think yeah on the levis front uh so i'm doing the titans team report the training camp report for football guys check those out uh malik willis kind of almost it's still a competition but willis is getting the majority of number two snaps now that wasn't the case the whole camp but willis has taken a step forward levis is certainly looking like he'll be qb3 this year so not a good sign for his dynasty prospects, especially, uh, you know, I, I think maybe year two, like if, if they move on from Tannehill, there's still potential there. Um, but like Jeff said, I'm not sure if there's even a window because of how he was regarded and where he's at now. Um, and then the guy I want to mention. So two guys, Dorian Thompson Robinson is getting the start over Kellen Mond in, in this week's preseason game, indicating that DTR might already be QB two behind Watson, who has reportedly looked very hit or miss recently. And so um, when, when we talk about the the volatility of Watson a little bit, you know, it's uh, there's a chance that Dorian Thompson Robinson has a massive boost in value. So I think that that's worth noting. And then Sean Clifford, I looked up at the screen the other night and I said, there's no way that's Sean Clifford. And then it was actually Sean Clifford out there just slinging. He looked like a gunslinger. I never once saw that at Penn state. Uh, he was not good at Penn state. And then he got drafted and we all laughed a little bit. But uh, he looks good, and I think that that's a a backup quarterback that I'd be willing to invest in in Dynasty now. I will not have to talk about Sean Clifford after having to talk about Brock Purdy. I will not do it. No more. I will. I, this is I'm done. I'm done with that to give a little context before we move on. Will Levis did three days ago get traded with uh, a second round pick for Derek Carr. So that is probably the best deal that I saw out there. If you're looking for maybe Derek Carr, if you're a contender or if you need that and you have Levis on your roster, just to give you guys an idea of that value. Before we move on, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. Comment below any questions, recent trades, or any thoughts on this topic that we're getting into, and we will t- we will we will talk back to you guys. We're going to give you guys comments and discuss it. Yeah. Also, make sure to head to footballguys.com forward slash plans to become a premium subscriber. Elite subscribers get custom dynasty content for less than $15 monthly or $70 annually. Everyone who purchases a Football Guys subscription has 30 days from the date of purchase to request their money back if they're unsatisfied, but you will not be. Join today. All right. Let's jump into running backs. Let's, let's do a little temperature check on the running backs. Bijan Robinson. He's a stud. He's not playing. Keep him in. Please just keep him inside. Do not let bubble wrap this guy with the running back situation in Dynasty. Bijan's fine. We don't need to see him. Jameer Gibbs sitting there preseason week one. He had six carries, 18 yards. He did have a reception, though, for 18 yards as well. Zach Charbonnet, you know, Kenneth Walker is still injured. There's questions about whether, where is he going to go? Uh, you know, Charbonnet lowered, the, lowered his head. He had, a, he had a few big runs and then four carries, 14 yards there. Kendra Miller, you know, we, you know, Kamara is going to be suspend, um, suspended. Saints are still flirting with the free agency out there, though. Uh, four carries, five yards. There was some question about his, you know, his vision this last week. We saw that kind of the tape and the film breakdowns. Tank Bigsby, uh, he had nine carries for 52 yards. So Tank looks 
Hey guys, tank looks a little good. We were talking about tank for a while here. If you followed us, so just the idea, you know, we might know a little bit what we're talking about. Tajay Spears, um, two back sets kind of there. Devin Shane seems to be just missing all these free agencies out here. So, you know, Devin's still out there. What do we think about these guys, Jeff? Who, who do you think, you know, maybe the Charbonnet thing? Should we maybe start buying into him a little bit if Walker's injured? Where are we going? Well, I, I wasn't going to start start at the top. And I know Christian casually mentioned the football guys training camp reports. And I think that that's one of the best contents that con pieces of content that we do all year long. We go through all 32 teams. We have it in writers that are assigned to each team. They scour the news coming out of the beat reports. They try to watch, they watch the preseason games. They try to watch everything that they can about these teams. And so the Falcons are my team. And that's one of the teams that I'm covering. And we're kind of the expectation that Bijan Robinson is going to be a certified stud from day one. I think it's it's probably, I mean, it's fair. It's close to being fair, at least in the passing game. I think it's there. Interesting what I did the report for the Falcons this past week, because it does seem to be that the team is really trying to get him to be a little bit more, bit more physical in his runs and be a little bit more decisive. And it does seem to be a little bit of bouncing runs outside if you follow the team reports. And the other nugget that kind of came out with it is Tyler Algier is going to play and Cordero Patterson is going to play and B. John Robinson is going to play. So you've got three three running backs there, and you're really, I think, to reward you where you're taking switching a redraft hat real quick to take Bijan Robinson in the first round. I think you really need a major passing role to come out of that. And if you're relying on the Falcons' passing game, um, you know, I think we're all at the point of good luck with that. But um, bouncing through, I do think it's interesting because the other thing that Falcons played the Dolphins in week one and Devin Shane is uh, gunning on the punt team and was playing in the fourth quarter behind Miles Gaskin with Raheem Moster and with Jeff Wilson Jr. Um, sitting that game out as the certified starting backfield. And that is one that I have not seen much conversation on that because yeah. it does seem to be that everybody thinks that a Shane is going to just take the whole backfield over and be that guy. And he certainly is probably the most dynamic option. But I think that especially a big factor there with Tua Tagliavola, and I think that you want some experienced running backs there for blitz pickup and those types of things, the way that the Dolphins tend to really use those two wide receivers, Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, to attack vertically, that offensive line is struggling in practice. And so you're going to want a veteran running back back there picking up blitzes. And so Shane, I don't know if I'm touching him in redraft, and you might get a little bit frustrated if you got him in dynasty too. Yeah, I was always a bit low on him because of the guy I want to talk about, Tank Bigsby. Um, you know, I'm, I'm also doing the Jaguars report. And so a lot of the stuff coming out of there is that, you know, ETN is the lead back and ETN is the going to get the lion's share of work. And I think that that is 100 percent true based on everything I've seen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, on the other side of things. He has a clear role. He is one of the only rookie running backs that got in for a snap with the first team if he is not already slotted in to be the starter. So he has that short yardage role. I think if we see ETN become a little more inefficient or you know as inefficient as he was last year on the goal line, I think you're going to get a goal line role for Tank Bigsby. ETN has improved in the passing game, and I think that that's notable. But I also think that when they need a pass blocker out there, it's going to be Tank Bigsby. He's the better pass blocker between him and ETN. So uh, good. I mean, he had one big run that kind of boosted his stats. Uh, he kicked it outside. It was just pretty bad defense and a fantastic block from Brenton Strange. But I think it's worth noting that statistically, uh, he was by far the best rookie running back in, in preseason week one. I'd like to see that continue. There's Jaguars are getting heated with the Lions in, in joint practices this week. And so I think this game is going to be a little more physical maybe than preseason week one. And so I'm excited to see that. You know, my big take, I wrote a big article on Jameer Gibbs, the spotlight. I I, th I still think Gibbs has a chance to finish ahead of Bijan this year. I know it's a hot take, but I I, I, I I think with his pass catching and PPR formats, he could do it. Like, I really do think that that could happen. Um, so that was nice to see. I think he had that catch for 18 yards and everything there. Um, and I think just overall, I think that that's the area. Look, I do want to point out Roshan Johnson. So Roshan Johnson, some of that people really like, I will say this. I did a deep dive into the bears backfield. Roshan is running back three right now. And it's, and I think it's pretty clear that he's running back three, like in terms of what I, all the research I looked at, I know the reports are, you know, we, it depends on where you go, but just based on it, it does seem like Roshan, the only thing that he does better than those two guys is pass blocking. 
but they have said that they've improved that. And they've also talked about Foreman being a better out of the backfield receiver. Like they've actually used him in that role in the preseason right now with Roshan being hurt. It gave Foreman a little bit of a bump there, I think. Um, and I think Roshan's one of those guys. He's a stash. You, know, you can stash him. He's a 24 guy. But I, unless there's an injury ahead of him, I do not see him being that significant this season. Yeah, two other areas I really wanted to talk about. Um, Deuce Vaughn looks fantastic in the Cowboys' backfield. And I know I I was somebody that I expected either Malik Davis or R Rico Dowdell to kind of step up as that second compliment to Tony Pollard. And if you would have gotten that type of situation, you might have had some standalone utility out of whoever emerged there, especially if they were able to take some goal line work. But if Vaughn is involved, and I think he's going to be, that could become a three-headed backfield where you've got Pollard as the main back. Maybe Vaughn comes in as a change of pace, and then you've got that extra third back that if you want to hammer a little bit in the game, I, I think that, that way that's the way that backfield is going to play. And if that's the case, then Pollard's going to be the only option out of there. And so uh, I think that we've kind of thought that along, but that is the one thing. And then the other, um, the legal situation with Joe Mixon that's going on right now is kind of an emerging situation. And Drew Davenport from footballguys.com has had some fantastic, information about that on Twitter, uh, kind of following that. And, and kind of the expectation is we might be seeing a suspension if that gets, if there is a verdict that's handed down here in the next couple of days, because the criminal charges have been opened back up. So Chase Brown's kind of lingering out there. And for a while, it looked like Travion Williams had pulled ahead as that second running back in Cincinnati, but he was injured. And so you've got Brown kind of lingering there and he's always had the dynasty steam on him. But Chris Evans is another potential option if, if Williams is unable to go and Mixon suspended, whoever is that lead back in Cincinnati, especially if it's for three, four, five games, is going to be a major factor in fantasy. Yeah. I'm not buying into Deuce Vaughn, man. I can't do it. I, he got first team reps this week, though. So, I mean, I'm, I probably should. Uh, I'm just not going to do it. And I'll, I'll gladly not buy into that profile. Um, I, we glossed over it. Kendra Miller looked bad. Like not he did not good at all, and I think there's a reason they've been exploring free agency. He there was one outside zone run uh, where he didn't know where to go. There was a wide open hole. It looked like a Trent Richardson play uh, from his time with the Browns there at the end. And so I'm a little worried about that. I know he had missed some time with injury, and he was kind of just working his way back. But it's worth noting and and keeping keeping an eye on, especially with where he was being drafted in rookie drafts. This could still be that opportunity to get out. Uh, especially if you're looking for 2023 production. Yeah. All right. I just buy Jameer Gibbs. He's still cheaper than he should be because he has top five running back potential in dynasty, in my opinion. Like I still think he's cheaper there. All right. Before we continue, we want to tell you about our strategy session giveaway. The three of us are committed to helping you win your dynasty leagues and are giving away live strategy sessions to three lucky listeners. We'll sit down on a video chat, analyze how we'd approach your dynasty roster. All you have to do is leave a review for the podcast, take a screenshot of the review and email it to Coleman at footballguys.com. Or you can DM me on Twitter. This is the last week. We are going to pick our winners after this week. So this is the last week you could do this. And then we will dive into your roster. So hurry up and get that, get that in there today. All right, let's jump over to the wide receivers. So when we're looking at the wide receivers and we're diving into the kind of what, what is our forecast here? Now, there's a lot of wide receivers here. Zay Flowers, he had a rush for one yard. So we had that. Jackson Smith, the jig, but three catches, 25 yards. Quentin Johnston, three receptions, 10 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Jordan Addison, one reception, 22 yards. And there's all kinds of other guys. We'll get into those guys. Um, but I do want to ask this. I'm going to go to Christian first. Quentin Johnston. He had a drop, a couple drops on the game, and you saw like everybody, you know, it really just is whatever your priors were on the kid is where you're going to go with that. Are you afraid? Are you worried about Quentin Johnson? No, not at all. I think a lot of the the problem with uh, his evaluation is there were there. I mean, there were a lot of body catches on his TCU film, but then you know throughout this off season, we've seen him high pointing balls, catching balls away from his body, and things like that. And so obviously this stat line is a little weird. Uh, the, the three receptions, 10 yards and a touchdown. I think the touchdown was like a, a five yarder or something like that. So it wasn't a good debut yeah. by any means, but I, I'm, I still, I mean, you're tied to Justin Herbert. This is like one of the easiest, I think he's underrated in dynasty right now because everyone is concerned. And I, 
I just he's not Jamar Chase, but I go back to Jamar Chase's training camp and how everyone panicked. And I even said something about his drops that year. And so I'm not going to do it with Quentin Johnston because when you have Justin Herbert as your quarterback, it's not going to matter. And I think honestly, when you look at his 2023 outlook, I think it's probably he's probably being underrated there as well because of the injury risk ahead of him. So yeah, I'm in. Get the drops out now, bud. And just don't drop it in the regular season. That'll be all right. So week one last year, there was a rookie wide receiver, big, fast wide receiver that people had questions about his polish and his hands. And he burnt a defensive back deep and the ball hit him right in his hands and he dropped it. And everybody wrote him off and it looked like he was going to be done. Said the veteran quarterback wouldn't go back to him. And then lo and behold, Christian Watson was the breakout rookie late rookie last year. And I think that that is a great comp for Quentin Johnston that uh, when you look at the explosion, the athleticism, I think when you look at overall what the Chargers want to do offensively, I think they're going to scheme the ball into Quentin Johnston's hand. Uh, The Chargers are my other camp team that I follow. And that touchdown, it was later in the second quarter and they had already taken Johnston out of the game. They put him back in and they said, this is the red zone. We're going to you. We want you to establish yourself as a red zone presence, as a red zone threat. We're going to do it in real time now. You're going to catch a touchdown, and he did. And so I think that that shows the belief and just the the way that they're really building this kid up. And I think that athletically, it's all there. And I think that, uh, I don't know, I think you're, you're kind of nitpicking a little bit maybe to, to just write this guy off because you can see the explosion is on tape. It shows up, and he does have the ability to high point to win footballs anything else christian on any of these other guys i mean i think we should chat about zay flowers again we've we've recently talked about zay flowers but boy oh boy is he just cooking defensive backs all over the place he didn't really get an opportunity to do so in that first preseason game he did so his one rush for one yard was actually a screen pass out uh, but it was thrown backwards so it, it counted as a rush Uh, But they were trying to scheme him the ball. And we talked about screens in the Ravens system and how impactful that can be. If Zay Flowers is the wide receiver that's getting the the majority of those screens, that's valuable for fantasy. I I think we're looking at, you know, probably a kid that should have been drafted ahead of maybe a few others in terms of what this passing offense can be versus what people had priors that it would be uh, based on, you know, previous Ravens regimes and things like that. But I just I wasn't as in on Zay Flowers, and I still believe in Rashad Bateman, but I think Zay Flowers looks like the clear separator in that offense, and Lamar likes to to throw to their clear separator. Yeah, I yeah. I, I, oh no, go ahead, Jeff. No, I was gonna. I, no, if you're gonna talk about Zay, go ahead, man. Yeah, I was just gonna say real quick. You know, I I, I said that this was gonna happen with Zay like two months ago. So welcome, guys. Yeah. Welcome back to the to the area. But just because I wrote about him, because in that offense, he's gonna thrive if he's that guy like Christian talked about in that role. That's the role you want in a in that Georgia offense from last year and now in that Baltimore offense. Um, and he will also he's going to minimize like Lamar's, I guess, inaccuracies at, at times. Like, I, I do think that they're just going, oh, hey, we need five yards, 10 yards. Let's get it to Zay. And then Zay can take it for 60. Like that is going to be what that role is. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the the, the highlights we see on, on social media or whatever, I don't know how much those matter. They're cool, though. I like them because it, 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 it shows my priors and it confirms them. That's right, baby. Um, but I do think that if in this awesome this system, he got drafted to a great system. And, and when people saw he got drafted to the Ravens, they got, oh, uh, but no, this is a different Ravens offense now. And I think that is what, when we did the evolution of offense show, that's, there's part of it. It's, you got to understand kind of how the changing schemes go. Uh, but go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of go down the list a little bit, maybe some rapid fire thoughts. But yeah, um, it does look like Jaden Reed has the slot locked down in Green Bay, and he's going to be a major factor in that offense. Michael Wilson, it looks like Michael Wilson's going to be the, the the de facto number two wide receiver in the Cardinals offense, playing in two wide receiver sets, playing outside in that offensive scheme. He's got size that the other wide receivers do not have. Um Jonathan Mingo, you know, we saw him be number one on starting on the depth chart. And, you know, his size does show up if you watch there. Uh, Demario Douglas from the Patriots and Puka Nakua and Tyler Scott are all deep names that if those are guys are available in your waiver wires, add those guys to your roster because those guys can make plays. Uh, and then take Dell. We, we saw the, the touchdown out of him and um, you know, the, the old you're too low on tank Dell apparently. But uh, I think that CJ Stroud asked for them to draft him and, they he's a separator and they're, they're really looking for that in that offense. 
My favorite retort is Tank Dell is too low to the ground. Um, speaking of guys that might be too low to the ground, and the one guy that on our list here that you skipped over is Josh Downs, who is having – he was uh, getting first-team reps over Isaiah McKenzie, finally. Uh, and it seems like Anthony Richardson is going to him in their short yardage stuff, which if you're reading some of the Colts reports, the offensive line is not performing well, and so they have to go to quick game. And without Jonathan Taylor out there, Josh Downs is the quick game receiver. And so I think Josh Downs, you know, maybe not for 2023, but I do think that that's a good dynasty investment as they start to build around Richardson. And if Richardson and him develop some chemistry, I think that we could see a a pretty valuable role for Josh Downs here very quickly. Well, Christian, I was just trying to set you up because I knew that was your guy. So. I know. Thank you. It, if you go back to what he did last year, Anthony Richardson with his slot receiver, Ricky Purcell, 33 catches, 661 yards and five touchdowns. There's something there with Anthony Richardson and those guys. Like it just, it's there. And downs can be that guy, whatever you believe about him as a passer he, downs can be that guy set forward. I do think he's valued the best. He's the best value in that range. When we're talking about those guys. Um, are you guys in on Puka? Everybody's in on Puka. We're we on the Puka train. I think he does, you know, looking at it, coming into scouting him, uh, I didn't love him, but I thought there was one scenario that would play very well for him. And it was Sean McVay drafting him and making him into Robert Woods. And that's exactly what happened. So um, I I do like that quite a bit. We've seen there's some Tutu Atwell smoke coming out of the Rams camp apparently right now. And I think that they're really going to, uh, especially with the injury to Cooper Cup, they're going to see what they have in some of these young wide receivers. And I really, that Rams season, I think is really going to be, let's, find out what we have in our young players yeah, yeah i was Good. just gonna say i know puka is splitting time with tutu is like the number three but the, he has a very clear role in this offense i think that yeah. and, when, and when you talk about you know it being a good injury replacement wide receiver that's the one uh because i think if uh one of the veterans ahead van jefferson cooper cup goes down i think puka has a, a massive role for that offense yeah, no, I think so too. That man, that Rams wide receiver room is like an analytics nightmare. BMI, mm-hmm. late breakout, age. age. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man, that that might become my favorite wide receiver room just because <laughs> the analytics gonna hate it. Like I'm all aboard the Rams train. All right, let's dive into tight ends and we'll get out of here. You know, not much to really talk about. Don Kincaid has been doing very well in preseason. No stats in week one, but it looks like he's going to be a very, very big piece in that offense. So shout out, Jeff. I gave him a little crap, you know, early in the offseason. You got to give him a shout out where, you know, he he talked about Kincaid early. Now everybody else is talking about Kincaid and they pretend Jeff didn't talk. That's usually how it works in the show. Uh, Sam Laporta. No stats there as well, but it does seem like LaPorta is going to have a role. How big of a role this year is one of those things. Luke Musgrave, one catch, eight yards. That's my guy. Luke, keep going. It looks like he's going to be the starter there. It, it, it does seem like he's going to take over there. And then Michael Mayer is kind of injured. You know, what I basically what I looked at over the reports, it says that he's still going to be the starter, but because of the injuries and everything that's been going on, he could have rotation early in the season in terms of like maybe 60, 40, 50, 50 snaps, whatever that looks like. But again, most tight ends are long plays, but you can go ahead and talk about Kincaid, Jeff. Yeah. How much do you love Kincaid this year? Do you think he can be the wide receiver too on that team? Yeah, I think he absolutely can be. And and if it helps you to understand, grab a pen and a piece of paper and write down Dalton Kincaid and write wide receiver after his name and keep doing that as many times as you need to, like a hundred times, you need to write it down a hundred times to get it through your head that this guy's a wide receiver in this offense. And they, they call it 11 and a half personnel. They are going to use him in the slot, even with the um, I kind of broke it down when I did my projections and having Stefan Diggs roll and then where Gabe Davis and Dawson Knox kind of landed. There's about 23% or so of the targets that were going to the Cole Beasley role. And if Dalton Kincaid can eat, even eat a portion of that, he's going to smash as a tight end. And so that that is uh, one that you definitely want to check out and, and try to acquire him if, if you can. If somebody doesn't believe in a rookie tight end, putting up production I, um, you know th- this is not going to be a case where you're going to be able to buy lower next year so go grab Duncan Kincaid um, and then a, a deep name um, Braden Willis is a, a name for the 49ers that he was a seventh round pick he's a kid out of Oklahoma he's really athletic and so there was a, a lot of tight ends in this class but and they, they're all, all get 
picked on dynasty rosters. There was a lot of tight ends that went late day two, but those are guys that are a lot of blocking tight ends. And so that's a late guy that has made some buzz in 49ers camp that is seventh round pick. And, and it's almost like he's got a roster spot locked down just two weeks into camp. Good notes. Good notes. Um, <clears throat> I, I Musgrave is the one. So I, I approached, I wasn't huge on Musgrave as a prospect. I, you know, I didn't think that there was enough there uh, for his tape just from his last season. But from an athletic perspective and what he's able to do in stretching the field, he's a perfect fit for this Green Bay offense. And I do think that I, I still like Tucker Craft as like that deeper option that you can kind of stash. And then I think there's still going to be a 12 personnel type of team. I think Tucker Craft will get his fair share. But Musgrave right now looks like the best value of the those top three to four there, uh, including Mayer. I also wanted to throw in two deep names. Uh, Brenton Strange is turning heads at Jaguars camp for his blocking. He's going to be on the field. They're going to run a lot of 12 personnel. And so if there were an injury to Evan Ingram at any point, I think he would step in as the number one tight end and could fall into some targets. Uh, and then, oh gosh, who is the other guy I was going to talk about? Josh Wiley. Uh, the the Titans drafted him uh, late in, in the NFL draft this year. And he's been hit or miss. He missed a little bit of camp. But once again, I, this offense is going to target Ch- Okonkwo quite a bit. If he were to go down, I think Wiley is the two already. Uh, and that's just with two weeks of camp. So I, I think I'd invest in those two in, in deep leagues. Yeah, I think uh, the point with Braden Willis that I wanted to kind of just go on with him, I think his athleticism in that offense, because they, you know, 21 personnel, they can use him in a lot of different ways. So it's something to know, like he could kind of take that role, maybe get those, you know, vulture touchdowns or something like that. Like Willis is that guy. I did write, do a bunch of write-ups on him. I mean, the big thing I said, he has really good hands and he's athletic. I mean, that's all right. Tied in 101. If you want to go for a late shot, hands and athleticism um, is kind of what you look like there. I still think, you know, Jeff owes me apology about Luke Musgrave. And then also Michael Mayer is a value. That's how, that's what I take out of both these guys um, in terms of that. So shout out, Luke. I appreciate you for still hanging with me. You and me are riding to the end there. All right. Well, that's our rookie check, our temperature check. We're just going through all these guys of what you guys should be doing with them in Dynasty and where they go. Um, keep listening, though. And if you listen on, if you're on YouTube, go to our podcast. You can find us there. Yes, that's where the full version is. We're about to dive into quite a few segments here. Uh, so, you know, go subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. If you're enjoying, subscribe to the Football Guys Dynasty Football Show.